So I'm here in one of my favorite natural power places up on the cliff. You can see right on the edge. Got a perfect little sitting spot here. Almost like a seat carved out of the rock. I think it's important to remember with the Gene Keys that ultimately we are the pure light of divinity. That's what we are. That's our essence. And the pure light of divinity shines like the sun in its wholeness and it shines as pure awareness. Pure awareness is not separate from that divinity of its source, just like the light of the sun is not separate from the sun. And that light of pure awareness is what shines through the gene keys. It's what activates the gene keys. It's what moves us and transforms us from our shadow frequencies to the gifts into our Siddic qualities of the Gene Keys. So the Gene Keys are a description of how that light of pure awareness structures itself into expression, into consciousness. So they're kind of a description of the shape of consciousness as it expresses itself within the pure awareness. super hot out today. Crazy. And both of these gene keys has a lot to do with knowing and how we know and what we think we know. In my own experience, being a sixth line I spent basically the first 30 years of my life educating myself. Education. Which slowly towards the end of my 20s turned into more experiential nature. I became interested in body work and healing and those things. But by that point, I really felt like I created a mental framework that could answer just about every why question that there was. I had a slot for it. I could answer it. If you gave me, why is this like this? Why is that like that? I could tell you a pretty intelligent, well thought out and systematic answer to that question. Based on the knowledge of the world that I had gained up until that point. Really, I was interested in systems. Systems. Systems understandings. Understanding things on a uh, contextual level. But the paradoxical thing with that is that the pressure to know had led me to down all these rabbit holes and so much seeking knowledge and, and discovering answers. But the pressure remained. It had not been resolved through that whole process and actually had only functioned to basically deaden the world around me. Because now everything had become a symbol and was devoid of its life force. It had lost its radiance through my defining and understanding of it. So through the descriptions I was just listening to, it differentiated between intellect and intelligence, intellect and intelligence. And it feels like now as a six line, I'm in my second phase of life and I'm basically just letting go of intellect in a big sense. Not that it disappears completely, of course, and it's a process, but learning to open into intelligence, which means opening into the vehicle, opening through the experiential qualities and starting to become curious about the actual Venus path as well, the emotional processing. But this question of why and the pressure that comes with that, the pressure that comes to have answers 
why this, why that. I remember as a child, my parents would always tell me, you were always asking why. I was just soaking in the knowledge of the world, basically programming the body, mind, vehicle into the collective consciousness through that question. Because as this gene key lays out, that is a question that cannot be answered. Yet is this deep pressure inside to answer. And the paradox that no answer will ever, will ever resolve the pressure. No answer will ever resolve the pressure. And the frustration of that, the profound frustration of finding all the answers and still not knowing, not knowing what I am, not knowing the truth, not knowing a satisfaction of self. And the frustration of that, that no one can give me, no matter what answer they give me, I've had so many teachers and I've been to so many systems of thought and books and profound wisdom coming through them that was actually mined through many people's deep inquiry and deep work. But it's not mine. It's a plug-in that's laid on top of this longing. And even the profound spiritual teachers I've had who are radiating the truth and the wisdom of their own light knowing. And I learn from them through asking them questions. And at a certain point, I can even answer a question in the same verbal way that they probably would. But has the knowing become my own? Not if there's still this deep pressure and deep dissatisfaction in the center of it, right? So, as I was listening to this Gene Key, I was seeing that. It's like no one else's knowledge can ever replace my own inquiry or can ever resolve this deep question within myself. And there is an invitation in it to go into the pressure, to be willing to go into the pressure without answering it and see what flowers out of that. And that's where it moves into inspiration. These hits of direct knowledge coming in that come in as like sparks of revelation and, and, cre and creativity and knowing, knowing, not intelligence as in content of ideas, but knowing come, that come in. And this process of that, that inspiration is not such a casual thing. It's like you have to throw yourself into the fire of not knowing in order to harvest this gift of inspiration. And that's not a comfortable thing. And it's a thing, it actually changes you as it happens. So you have to like dive into the river itself and you can't know it from apart being apart from it, which is what I as a six line wanted to do. You know, you want to intellectualize it and look down and just know it as a thing apart from yourself. And this, this gift is saying, no, no, that will never do. That will never answer your question. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I really was wishing that would work. I thought maybe it could, you know? But now it's like, nope, you gotta dive into your own process and you have to harvest the diamonds out of the minds of your own inner knowing and uh, then there's really a question here for me in the education part. I mean, I can see where the intellect took over in knowing and the description of that made me think of almost like people like not Richard Hawkins Christopher Hitchens hmm. but this place you can get to in the intellect where it's almost just full of like disdain and it sees the whole world as just being peopled with idiots and looks down from its high horse in judgment upon them all. And it's innocent, I mean, it seemed like maybe a solution from the intellect. It's like, if I make myself right, maybe I'll become happy. Of course, it just doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what's the pathway in that one? 60 second, precision. 
So yeah, from what I remember was precision is similarly, it's a deeper state that comes from within, from being willing to sit with the inquiry, the contemplation, to be willing to let the words spring almost from like an inner geometry, an inner knowing. through the layers of subtle manifestation. Because true knowing is vast and is abstract, is collective. And so it also made me think of the Akashic Records. It's almost like a library of all knowledge. And as we lean into precision, we become like a skilled librarian that can go into different rooms, different stacks, different categories, different books, different chapters, different lines, and can read the information there. And then the shadow, it's the intellect trying to prove its proficiency. And it's heavy. Oh. And that made me think of doing the taxes or getting bogged down in the minutia of projects where that can become just like a blockade for me, which I think is actually a resistance to the gift of precision because I think I have to do it through this effort of mind and oh my goodness, it's tiring and painful. But it's almost like just right there is where the transcendence can happen into the larger field and stay with the question, what do I need to see here? What's the information that I'm looking for here? And it's almost like just an intention and an effortless letting go is what allows that information to come out of the internet, the ethernet, the shared knowledge bank, and in through like the third eye, pineal gland, and into expression in the world. The other thing that was coming up as I was contemplating these things, because these are like the gift frequencies in my chart anyway, And of course, I'm just getting into this, just getting into this exploration of the Gene Keys. But how it seems right now to me is that these four gift frequencies, the way I was just seeing it is almost like, that's almost like our light body qualities, our auric qualities, like our higher self qualities. And then the Venus path is kind of like the emotional transformation that happens right down through our core from the root chakra up through our relationships, through our worldly human experience. And it's like our gifts give us this frequency, frequency scaffolding that allows us to do this inner work, profound inner work of the Venus path, transmutation, transformation through our humanness. And then that leads into, of course, the pearl sequence, which is kind of like the fruits of our labor and how the work of our gifts transmuting and transforming through the emotional and relational Venus sequence express themselves out into the world and create change in our dream, in our play, and are the fruits of the labor that benefit those around us. So I'm feeling very inspired by this system. I mean, systems attract me, and of course, I'm learning to hold them lightly, to allow the light to shine into them and to not feel like I'm the personal self harvesting little nuggets to improve myself and 
be in this never-ending processing self-improvement place but really this surrendered shining of the awareness light through the expression of the gene key vibrations but even just by looking at that beautiful geometric shaping of the gene key profile layout it just feels illuminating to me and to have that structure of course makes for a, a deeper way for us to connect in communication and I think makes this talk a little more structured and a little more practical in terms of you being able to take it and use it for yourself and look at how it reflects into your gene keys and I think makes it a little more repeatable into the future. It's almost like the masculine structure to the feminine expression. Whereas when I just do a walk and talk free flowing, it feels beautiful and it's moving from inspiration, but it's also almost only relevant to myself on some level. And there's a beauty to that, but I do feel like the gene keys offer this shared language that's just subtle enough and just nuanced enough to still allow for a very profound wisdom to flow through. So I'm excited to keep exploring it. And as I see that it's such an unlimited system when it goes into the Siddic qualities, like, wow, what an invitation into our divineness, into our divine expression, what an unlimited invitation. And I'm so excited to see how that wants to express itself through myself, you know, like, what a tool. So I'm very grateful that that's there to Richard for bringing that through. And I think I'm gonna keep looking into it, you know, because I feel very inspired uh, to open into and flower through that understanding and to keep shining the light of awareness here on the system as a whole and on the expression as it shows up as Peter. So thank you so much for joining me here. I hope this was helpful. And please feel free to comment with any insights, revelations, reflections in the comment section about maybe your experience with either maybe the gift in education or with the lines, or whatever is coming up for you. So thank you so much, and bye-bye.